Hey guys, I have a really cool package here from Asher Knife Co. So you guys know I love Justin at Asher Knives and he has some stuff to send me. He's been on a little bit of a drought. Um, he's just been waiting for OEMs to get him stuff and he finally got the Nero's in and he got those sold, I think. Uh, so that's great. I don't think that's in here. And then he's got the two new models coming from Kunwu Knives. They're the OEM on it. Uh, the With Hole Spiro, or the Hole Spiro, I call it. And a new model called the Douglas. So I'm pretty interested to check those out. Let's unbox it with an Asher knife. huh? I got the Nomad here in full titanium, the frame lock with M390. Now... I did have the Nomad 3.0 Axis style lock knife version, but I gave it away to my cousin. Um, shout out to Greg. He reached out to me recently and uh, found out he's a little bit of a knife guy. So I hooked him up and I really like this titanium one the best personally. So um, yeah, I see Asher is rocking the same sort of bubble wrappers I get on Amazon, which is awesome. All right, so this is the new box. If you get an Asher from the uh, Kun Wu, so if it's the Kun Wu made ones, you get this box. I think I don't know if he updated the box in general or just on these. Still, no markings. <laughs> he loves the no markings. I think he does it on purpose so that he can use the box with whatever, or I don't know. So let's take a peek. All right, so let's put this aside. This is the one we've seen before. This is the whole Spiro, as I call it. And let's take a look at the packaging again. You just have your slot cut out. I like that. It's very simple. Has a magnetic clasp. Um, just does the job well. I like this box. So here it is. It does come with a reversible clip, of course. Uh, this one is set up for right-hand carry. You have centering that is dead nuts, looks like, to me. Um, you have this little lanyard post back here with the backspacer. Very reminiscent of the prototype they did for us. So maybe that's kind of a Kun Wu signature right there is to do that. Uh, you have bead-blasted titanium. You have a, a deep carry clip, which I believe... Has it been changed from the... I don't know. It looks a little bit different, but I like it. Um, it's got sort of this gray finish to it. It's not bead blasted. Um, I guess it's steel hardware, right? Uh, and the biggest change on this, as you can tell, is the logo is now right here. So the logo is now etched, I believe, right onto the pivot instead of being on the blade. It was this huge logo on the blade. It was the first thing I mentioned when... Uh, opening this. You'll see here it says S35EN. Oh, wow. Felt like... Hold on. Okay, so if I get down lower, I can fire it out left hand. It felt like I got tied up there, right? Yeah. If I put pressure down, I believe on the prototype, I could just flick it, and I think that's because they tighten the detent. Um... Oh, yeah, they tighten the detent. That is money. Yes. All right, uh, all you right-handed folks are going to love that. I'm telling you, you're going to love that. I don't know if there was any change. Yes, there was. This is now a stonewashed blade. I believe the blade was bead blasted on the uh, original prototype that I had. Um, it does honestly feel thinner. Oh, that's sharp. Uh, Kun Wu it prides themselves on proper heat treats and grinds and sharpening. Um, uh, one of the guys behind Kun Wu, Sergio, is a friend of mine. And he is all about getting them, you know, get the HRC up. Just he wants to have uh, high quality uh, blades, grinds, and edges, uh, which is really good to see for a production company like that. It feels super sharp, guys. I'm going to grab a piece of paper here. I mean, look at that. So, very, very nice. 
we'll keep this around for the other knife. Um, really excited to have this in. Uh, Justin is a great dude. He's a friend. Um, I've been checking out Asher knives since the beginning, it seems like, and he just keeps getting better, guys. Um, he did say I could keep this and the other one, um, uh, but of course I'm going to send them around, pass around style so some other channels can check them out. Um, one thing I'll note that I don't recall, I can't remember if it was on the prototype or not, but it felt like there was more lock bar access on the prototype. Like this was cut back a little bit and you could get in there, but I can't remember that exactly. You do have a chamfer on both sides of the lock bar and I mean, it doesn't feel difficult at all. So I just sort of remember it being different, but it's fine. It's good. Um, again, left-handed, you just got to ride that clip. Now, here's the thing. If you flip the clip, I don't know how it'll go. You know what I mean? If you flip the clip over for lefty carry, you might have to do the old pivot move, you know, go up to the pivot. Now I'm sure the thumb flick, yep, thumb flick works. Um, let's see. What's going on? <laughs> you just got to flick it out. I'm flicking up. Let's try it right-handed. Yeah, see, right-handed it's fine. As long as you're not on the lock bar, you can just flick up and it's fine. Let's feel these bearings because I know one thing I didn't love was um, they use these tiny little bearings. And it was something I would have updated, but I think it was too late for him to update it. Um, so they left them in, but there is no pivot lash at all. Like, I'll say the first prototype felt a little bit, um, I hate to use the word janky, you know. Um, but it did feel a little bit like that. Like you would disengage and it would just go bloop, bloop and kind of hit your nail. And here, here's an example. This is a super expensive knife. This is the Oz Machine Company Roosevelt. And even this has it a little bit. When I disengage, just kind of listen and watch. You hear how it kind of like falls, bounces up and down and I don't know. To me, that just makes it feel a little bit jank, so to speak. It's not actually. This is a super premium knife. But watch this. It just kind of like disengages and drops to my nail slowly. And then you shake it down. I don't know. It just seems to me I like that a little bit better. Um, yep, I'm out here comparing <laughs> the um, Spiro to the Roosevelt. But honestly, guys, they're very similar. I mean... Size-wise, they're not too far off. You know, uh, the Spiro is a little bit bigger, but of course on the Spiro, you don't have a choil. So uh, it makes sense that the handle's a little bit bigger. Blade shape-wise, you're looking at a drop point. Honestly, I prefer this blade shape because it's got less of that belly. Now, I think aesthetically, I like this one better, but um, I love that he's got the reversible clip with the filler tab. You have a nice blasted scale on both of them. Um, nice hole design. I like this hole for sure. That's what she said. And then you got a frame lock over here on both sides. I mean, they're pretty, uh, pretty comparable knives, so to speak. I really like that. Um, and yeah, they're thin. That was the thing I wanted to note was they're thin. Look at that. About the same Spiro, honestly, is a little bit thinner, which is impressive, guys. Um, here, for example, is the Nimble Tanto, which is just a normal thickness knife. You know what I mean? I wouldn't call it thin, but it's not like thick. See that? <laughs> it's like two-thirds of a, of a EMP EDC. So, uh, really cool. So, this is the Spiro with whole Spiro. Um, you can see the updates, man. Huge, huge updates. I think it's uh, all for the best. I think this is going to be probably one of the best bang for buck knives you're going to get this year and maybe ever, guys. I mean, a right around 100 bucks for this titanium and S35VN with excellent build quality. Like, as much as I love a lot of the previous Ashers, um, you're just going to see a different level of fit and finish and build quality here. Now, he did die like he got this other OEM dialed in. I mean, at this point with this knife right here, it is dialed very, very nicely. And the fit and finish, everything, he freaking beat them into submission. But 
you know, first project out the gates, you get something like this with Kun Wu. I just think that's impressive. So anyway, I'll be hanging out with this guy and then I'll uh, send it around. I'm still getting used to this lefty style. I do like being down here and being able to flick it. That's fine. Um, now I don't know what will happen when I get rid of the clip if I can still rest down here or if I have to go even lower or just do the lean. You can do the lean like this. <laughs> Just lean off the lock bar, you know? But excellent, excellent design. So that's the with hole Spiro. And then let's grab the Douglas. So this is called the Douglas. The Douglas. So this does have vibes of some of the other models he's done. And there, there you go. There's the back chaser and lanyard. Kun Wu. Um, you do have the insert screw. Um, I do believe this is going to be a little bit more of a budget version. Now, they're all budget knives, essentially, because they're all around $100. But you can see here, titanium, right? And this is micarta with steel uh, liner lock. This is going to have thumb studs and a fuller. Ooh, a fuller. Um, reversible clip right there. You have your pivot. One side has a show side. I like that. They got it on the right side. Looks like T8 here. Uh, I'm thinking T6 down here. Um, let me just compare T8. Eh, could be all T8. Let's check. Hardware check. Nope. This is. This is not on here. I'm betting it's the same. Yep, T6 there. T8 body. Okay, so he's going for uh, T8 body screws, and the only screws that are T6 are going to be your clip screws and your insert screw there, probably. So, okay. Fire it out of there. Nice grip on here. It's an interesting micarta. Is this like a green micarta? I don't know what kind of micarta this is. Here's the micarta they used on our black my carter for the stout and this just this this looks good i like this i like the screen my carter no lock stick good action centered blade yeah that d10 is on point Ooh, okay let me reverse flick it oh yeah oh yeah boy fuller oh ha ha get out of dodge Get out of Dodge. All right, so I am pretty sure this is in S35VN. I don't know why I thought it was 14C. I think maybe he was thinking about going, holy cow. Where's that paper? This feels even sharper. I mean, come on. Look at that. I'm making ziggy zaggies up in here. Um, yeah, these are both razor sharp out of the box. Um, yeah, I think he was questioning, thinking about going with 14C at one point. Maybe he just decided to stick with it. This is a production sample, so it's possible he could have changed his mind. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure this is S35. Guys, this detent, oh, it's just perfect. It doesn't, it's not too strong, so you can still get your finger in the fuller and get it out real easy. You can use your ring finger. Oh, hold on. Stud caught me. Ring finger. Pinky. Can he do the pinky? Right-handed. Oh, let me do it left-handed. Pinky. Come on, baby. Yeah. Nailed it. Uh, yeah, there's no stick at all. I say that, like, interestingly because... Lately, um, here's an example, the blow, I mean, glow rhino, um, light bringer where it's just so thin and stiff, this lock bar, there's no jimping on it and it's so stiff. It has a little tiny bit of stick that like, ugh, it just like, it literally digs into my nail to move it out of the way. And this is just like, oop, Hey, look, Hey, I'm moving over. Like, it's just easy. You know, is there any. I mean, maybe the ever so slightest hint of rock. I can, I can feel a little bounce. 
but it's not like moving or anything. So we're good there. Uh, yeah, this feels excellent. And it still has a solid detent. Like, it's not weak. I'll reverse wick it until it breaks. Ready? Like, uh, perfect in my opinion. So then, you have this crazy looking clip point. A very douglas -y clip point, if you ask me. Um, and I gotta say, I don't hate it. Usually I'm not a clip point guy, but... This may even be characterized as a spirit. No, it's a clip point, right? But like, for example, the things I like to do, like cut shipping labels, I want a low tip, right? That's why I prefer something like a Tanto, where I have a secondary tip down here I can use, right? Cut into things. Um, or I like, say, a sheep's foot blade, right? Where I can use that tip, boom, cut real easily, right? So a clip point causes an issue a lot of times, right? And I don't even know how many I own anymore at this point because I probably have sold everything off with a clip point. Um, I think if I have anything with a clip point. Oh, the only thing I think I have is crazy. Oh, of course I have the Jack Wolf knives, right? Uh, so here's an example, right? Traditional looking knife. And I think that's what he was going for here. Um, and you see how the tip looks sort of similar, but the thing is on a clip point like this, traditionally, it kind of raises up at the end and you get that belly at the end, right? So when you go to use that tip, right, you got to raise up pretty high to get into that tip, right? Um, we're most likely, if you're trying to do this, you're just going to end up using that, that, all that belly right there and just cutting. So... On this, it seems to me, I haven't tried it yet, I'm about to, like, I have the tip still at a straight angle. Perfect. See? It's at a straight angle. Instead of being raised up at the end, and I'm hitting belly right here, right? I have to go all the way up here to cut straight with the tip. With this, I can just go right at it. You have belly, belly, and then it kind of goes straight out to the tip. I like that. I think the only downside to that maybe would be you could have a weaker tip, but it looks pretty sturdy there. Um, it might not be as stout. Now, this is obviously a slip joint, and it's meant to be thin and all that good stuff. But anyway, I think I really like this blade shape. It's kind of like a clip point look, but has the, still has the ability of a drop point or something like a spear point. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm really digging this Douglas, guys. So I really do like the with hole Spiro, of course. Um, but I've handled that one before, so this is a little more exciting for me to try something new. But both of these are phenomenal, guys. Um, at this point, you know I just love Asher knives and... Um, it's hard for him to do wrong in my eyes, but I'm also a, a brutal reviewer, right? And he knows that. He knows I'm going to hit him with whatever I find on these, and I'll find what I can on these, right? That's kind of my job, so to speak, but I'm not really noticing anything. These stone washes are fantastic. They are excellently done stone washes. These thumb studs are fantastic. They have a great, they have a little nipple on them. <laughs> But they have plenty of grip. Like, I don't know how to explain it. They're just, like, really good, right? Um, can I use my index finger to flick it out? I saw... <laughs> no, I can't do that. I saw somebody do that, and I was like, can you really do that? Ugh. Yeah, I can't do that. I think it was Jared. He had some knife where he's like, it's so good, you can even do this. Ugh. Well, sorry, Douglas. You're not that good. You're good, but you're not that good. Now, is this a titanium backspacer? I think it's steel. So, it's... But even if it is, it's not heavy. It's got a great, like, thickness to it. It's obviously not as slimline as the uh, Spiro here. 
but it's got a good thickness to it. It feels really good in hand. That's kind of the thing with this guy. It feels really good in hand. You got this crazy micarta that I don't know the name of. Excellent, excellent action. Excellent liner lock. And you got the fuller to flick. I mean, it's really kind of a signature at this point, right? Like he does the fuller with the stud. Probably can't do it on this because of the lock bar. Do it right-handed though. Um, you know, fuller with studs and then cool blade design. Very simple, neutral handle. That's his thing, right? And this is what you want, guys. This is what you want out of your designers, right? It's just like EMP, EDC with the Tanto, Nimble. He's got the sheep's foot version, the larger version, the smaller version. When you have a good design, you want to just utilize it. Put different blade shapes on it and kind of just make it work, right? Now, this is a new model, the Douglas, and this is the Nomad, and this is the Spiro. They're actually all different models, but you can see his sort of evolution in there, and I love that. So, anyway, guys, that's it. I think that's pretty long unboxing here. Um, I'll probably get these sent around to some guys because these are coming in hot, and I don't want to take up a bunch of time with them, so I might just get them sent out right away to uh some other channels i think i think i had um uh, i forget who it was i gotta send it to one other person i think i'll send it off to jared first uh jared neve and then we'll get the rotation going so i really want to thank justin over at asher knife co for once again providing some cool ass knives uh for us to check out i really appreciate that dude and um, I hope these do really well because look at them. Hunter Bones-ish, maybe a little less for this one. And you're getting some really cool materials, really cool stuff, and great action, great fit and finish. And best of all, guys, the heat treats and the blade grinds you can trust on these from Kun Wu. So um, that's a good, good thing. So I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.